Prime Minister Perry Christie giving his take on the recent downgrade from Standard & Poor's, placing the Bahamas one step lower than investment grade. Good evening, everyone. I'm Keishla Adderley. And I'm Charisma Robinson. Topping news, the Prime Minister and his state finance minister explained the rationale behind the decision, but placed specific emphasis on the rating agency's revisit of the outlook projection for the country. Now, Clint Watson tells us tonight that those government officials say that several factors ought to have been considered to give a more accurate accurate picture of the economy. Call it agreeing to disagree. It appears a recent downgrade from one of two international credit rating agencies may be based heavily on perception. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie detailing that despite Moody's maintaining its rating on the Bahamas, Standard & Poor's reportedly came to the conclusion that the Bahamas should be downgraded to below investment grade. Even though during its earlier downgrade this year, because of the Stall Bahama project, it suggested to the government something be done to get the project going again. Mr. Christie says despite the fact the government has done just that and more, S&P still went ahead with the downgrade. They're saying that there will be, by 2018, positive indicators, but that they have doubts as to whether what has been promised by Bahama and the government that it would take place in the time in which we say it will take place. And our job now is to prove standard and pause wrong, right, and verify why Moody's itself retained the investment grade for the Bahamas. The nation's leader notes that the country has been hard hit with two hurricanes back to back, and this has placed enormous strain not only on government's finances, but many businesses and residents are still reeling from the effects of these storms. He says the economic impact of climate change on the Bahamas should never be understated nor overlooked. Committed to fiscal responsibility and prudent management of finances, he notes there is still a silver lining. They said, right, there is the upgrade of the outlook from negative to stable. And that means, therefore, we are disagreeing on the time it's going to take to bring about the results that they say should be in place here. And that's not all. Mr. Christie is of the view key injectors to the economy were left out by S&P in their haste to downgrade. They have failed to properly take into account the weight right, of Bahama. And we felt that if they had spoken to the new owners, they would have had a different view as to what is going to take place there. For example, they, and I see some elements in the opposition, doubt that there would be um, 1,000 to 1,500 jobs in January. The government has no doubts about that at all. Already scores of construction workers are on site, with 3,500 jobs expected in August. The Prime Minister says his administration has been working very hard to bring the positive outcome that is now taking shape with Bahamar, and soon the Grand Bahamian economy will experience an uptick. He says they're not deterred by this recent move by S&P. We are going to use this negative development by Standard & Poor's to incentivize our efforts, not just to get stronger, better, more quickly, more, more or quicker results, but also to be able to ensure that the Bahamian people have a better understanding of the challenges the country faces, and that we will make every effort to have them live through this experience with us. And talk about turning a negative into a positive. Prime Minister Christie says they will now use this recent downgrade by signing reports to prove the fact that they can do just that, turn around the economy and show the significant improvement in a shortest possible time. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News.